Hello guys and welcome back to OpenGL, the next episode. And here is where we are. We're basically going to be setting some uniforms and show how to do some debugging with that and fix a few corrections from last video where I'm very surprised that no one actually called out. Well, when I was calling the function, I was passing the VA out. What it actually needs is the shader. So I passed it the shader identity and it works fine. So here's the console. As we can see, we got color and position as active inputs. Uh, and I've also went ahead and set up the uniform code so it's now up there on the repo. And we also did a few other things, which I'll go over real quick. Basically, the short version is we are now ready to do whatever we want with shaders. And I'm gonna go ahead and walk through all these changes to have all that ready for next video. And we'll start actually doing all some shader magic and we're gonna learn a lot here guys believe me trust me subscribe let's do this i did some auto formatting with my ide so a bunch of stuff looks like it got changed because you know it's all green here in github but it didn't actually get changed uh, but i did change query a trips to query shader and it now has the uniform one in there as well which is down here at the bottom query uniforms so that way we can pass in a shader handle and check what uniforms are available and we can arbitrarily do this for any of our shaders so it's just something to be aware of it's like the main thing of this tutorial this is doing that making some corrections final prep here and I also added in a little bit of basic model math where as you can see I pushed to this uniform called U model matrix so I went ahead and created the shader files as GLSL files and I opened them with Visual Studio, just regular Visual Studio, because it seems to have better syntax handling. So there's the vert shader, there's the fragment shader, pretty straightforward. Uh, the model matrix is there as a mat for uniform and we just times it by the position to get the final position. I could get rid of this whole final position here and just put the math right at the end here. But I like having it like this because it gives us some playroom here to do stuff before we assign the final position. So that's the point of declaring variables within local blocks is uh, you can do some processing. Let's walk through some more code here. I added a little time function, just started out with the previous time, get the current time every loop, get the delta time, the difference between it, and then set the previous to the current so it'll be ready to update for next frame. That way we can do stuff with delta time. On the spinning, spinning triangle you saw a little bit, we start our final model matrix as just a identity matrix. First we translate it and the way I'm making it go in a donut like circle there is with the sine and cosine thing. Let's get out of select mode here. There we go. Yeah, the sine of whatever the current time is and the cosine of it on the x and y and divided by two so it was going off the screen otherwise. And of course the z is just zero since we're not doing anything with projection or view yet. And then I rotate it, scale it, and I'm just rotating with the time as well. And doing a scale to half the size. And then we get the location of that model matrix variable and set it to what it is updated to be. So we do this every loop and then we draw all of the things in our draw details from uploading which we did on episode whichever one or two and that's pretty much it. Swap buffers, pull events, still got some old code in here from the random number generator which is right here. We might use that later. What else did I change? I'll just go through it all. Callbacks are the same. I just removed static source. I believe we went through most of this. I did have to include the matrix transform to do those operations with the GLM. Otherwise, I think we already went through all that file. Utilities, I added the read to string. One of them that just returns a string. This is the one we're using. There's also one here where you can pass it a string that it fills out. Essentially the same function, just two ways of handling that string. Let's check out the mesh loader. It's all the same. I just removed static from some of those functions. I believe they should just be in line. Here's the query. Oh, it's renamed to query shader. 
there's that new function that we added to query uniforms. This was basically just taken off that same site we looked at, OpenGL Cookbook. But the code's pretty generic. If you just look up the functions, you'll see that you can basically do anything you want with them. So yeah, that's pretty much it. From now on, we're mostly going to be, uh, well, we're gonna render a core object, like a square or a triangle or a circle, and then we're gonna do some operations on it with these shaders. And we're gonna start getting into some of that, kind of about how to do effects or different things and just basically start opening up the realm of shader possibility here. That is the, really the main goal of this series. So hope you'll follow and I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.